Question number five says a grandfather clock is controlled by a swinging brass pendulum that is 0 0.8 meters long at a temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. What is the length of the pendulum rod when the temperature drops to 0 degrees Celsius? Round your answer to four significant figures. Answer it in millimeters. B. If the pendulum period is given by the equation t equals 2 pi times the square root of l over g, where l is the length, does the change in length of the rod cause the clock to run fast or slow? Okay, so the first thing that happens is we, got, uh, we start out with the sun out, and it's 21 degrees Celsius outside, and this thing is at 0 0.8. Eight. Let me let me write that again. Zero point eight meters, and then all of a sudden we get some clouds, and the sun's blocked, and the temperature drops down to zero degrees, and uh, and this thing shortens by by some distance, so it it changes to zero point something meters. We don't know what it is, and so that's what we're trying to find. And so we we know that we can use the equation for. Um, linear expansion, which is the uh, the change of length is equal to this uh, linear expansion coefficient times the original, the initial length, times the change in temperature. Now one thing we want to note is that alpha is given as, as uh, um, degrees Celsius to the negative one, so per degree Celsius. And so we need our change in temperature to be in degrees Celsius in order to cancel out. Um, so we can expand this equation so the change of L can, would be the final length minus the initial length is equal to our, our linear expansion coefficient times the initial length um, multiplied by the final temperature minus the initial temperature. And so uh, what we want to solve for is this L final, so we just add the L initial to both sides and we get that the final length is equal to alpha initial length final temperature minus initial temperature plus the initial length. And from the chart in the textbook for the average coefficient of expansion for some materials near room temperature, we can look and we see that, that the uh, coefficient for brass and bronze are both equal to 19 times 10 to the negative sixth and that's in uh, degrees Celsius to the negative one. So we have that part and we we need to um, we need to find out what uh, let me rearrange this here we need to find out what um, the rest of it is so uh, the initial link that gives us as as uh, zero, 0 0.8 meters, but it wants the answer in millimeters. So we're just going to go ahead and multiply that by a thousand millimeters over one meter. So the meters cancel out and we will have that the initial length is 800 millimeters. And the, the last thing we need is the change of temperature. So we, we can say that the change of temperature, um, it started out at, at uh, uh, the final temperature was zero degrees and we started out at 21 degrees so our, our change in temperature is going to be minus 21 degrees Celsius. So we just need to plug in the numbers. You get, uh, you'll end up with 19 times 10 to the negative 6 uh, per degree Celsius times, times 800 millimeters times negative 21. All of this is going to be times, or is going to be plus the 800 millimeters for the original length and what you'll notice is um, in this term right here we have a negative and so we know that this whole term is going to be negative and uh, so when we add that to 800 we know that our answer is going to be less than 800 and so uh, when you plug all this in you should get an answer of 799.6808 millimeters and so this makes sense because our temperature went down, and so we think that our length should shorten, and, uh, and that's what happened. And the next thing it asks in Part B 
was um, did this thing cause did this whole thing cause the the clock to slow down or speed up? And so um, this is giving us the t. The t is the period, uh, the pendulum's period. So from the time that it takes the pendulum to swing from here to here is given by this equation. And let's just say that for every swing, um, the clock moves forward by by a certain amount. So um, this this is uh, our minute hand and our second hand, and it moves forward by this much on every swing. And so we want to know how long does it take for the second hand to move. It, it should take about one second. So, and so whenever we, we look at our initial length and our final length, so the initial length we said, we need to make sure first of all that this is in meters because gravity is given in meters per second. And the, meter, the length needs to cancel out so that we are left with our answer in seconds. And so we need to make sure that the length is given in meters. So um, 0 0.8 is the initial length, and 0 0.7996808 is the final length. And so which one is going to, how is that going to affect the time? And so the, uh, you plug those numbers into this equation, and what you'll get is that the, with the initial length, the time took 1.795196 seconds for each swing from side to side. And then it, it took a little bit less time. You can see that the 5 changed to a 4. It took a little bit less time whenever it shortened. So the clock would actually speed up. It would go faster.